spread up to the string methods, right? And maybe conversions of the data types, the uh, method of the string. And we were uh, looking for the uh, indexing method yesterday. So we'll start with that. Okay, so indexing and slicing particularly terms to be the uh, number of characters counted one by one, right? That is uh, similarly, let's say that these are the numbers 0, 1, or let's say these are the numbers 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. Okay, let's say these are the numbers. Now, if I go to find out their index positions, for 10 if I go to find out the index position of 10 so 10 index position is 0 similarly for 12 will be 1 for 13 it will be 2 14 3 15 4 for 16 it's 5 and for 17 it's 6 nice so if you go for calculating the or finding the index number from the left hand side or from the starting side you'll be getting it as 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 right but what if you go from the right hand side from the right hand side it would be minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 and minus 7 okay so from the right hand side it goes with the minus 1 and from the left hand side it goes with the 1 or sorry 0 all right so from 0 if you count from the LHS or left hand side it would be from 0 to 6 and from the right hand side it will be minus 1 to minus 7 all right so this is your indexing particular every uh, individual number or character will have its own index number Okay, so let's say let's make a string here. Let's say that this is a string. Okay, so x is this is a string here. I'm given now. If I go and search for x of 0, so it would be right because if I go to see the first element among this would be t that is your 0 similarly if you find the x of 1 you will get that h okay so this is your index values so how many number of elements are there in this x this is 17 okay this is 17 now so what would be your index value so always your index ranging from left hand side would be from 0 to whatever length is whatever the length of x is minus 1 okay so this would be okay this is an error right so this would be the syntax you can see here your index value will start from 0 and it will go to the length of x minus 1 that's all right that is from 0 to 16 understood so length of x minus 1 so you will write it as you can find it as minus 18 that is not right okay so you're getting it as minus 16 so that's uh, 0 minus length of x minus 1 so length of x is 17 and it is minus 1 so this this will not be minus 1 this will be 0 to 16 okay so the uh, last element will have the index value of 16 but if i count it from the right hand side from the right hand side i will say that the uh, index values would be minus 1 to the length of x that's it that would be uh, minus 17 only okay not this so you can write this as Okay, so this will be the uh, 
value if you go from the right hand side right hand side index value will go from minus 1 and will go up to minus 17 okay from the left hand side it will go to, from the 0 and it will go till the 16 understood that is an index value so you can meanwhile range on these things you can make range that is called as your slicing now so if i say that x of 2 from 5 so this means that I want every number from 2 going till 2, 3, like 2, 3, 4, that's all. Okay, it will go till 2, 3, and 4 there. Not, nothing much. You can see that is, is. Okay, so this is 2, 3, and 4. So if I see 0, 1, and you can find it, it's 2, 3, and 4 is a gap. So I'm getting 2, 3, and 4 is a gap, right? Similarly, we can just index these things as minus 5 to minus 7, uh, it's to minus 3. So see, always while indexing or slicing, always when uh, doing these things, what you should uh, have a focus on that, you always write the smaller number first and then the greater number, right? So that is minus 5 is smaller than minus 3, right? So I'm writing like this. So I'm getting this ri. So if you see your minus 5. So, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. It's saying minus 5 to minus 2. So, that is you are getting Ri. Right. Like this, you can get your elements, you can slice down the values. Meanwhile, you can what you can do? You can, okay. Meanwhile, what you can do is you can write it as 0 to everything, mm, 2 intervals, right? So what we'll do here, here see I have given two columns. Now what this stands for? That is one value is missing here. It can be any particular value, right? Okay. Now I'm writing, I'll start the indexing from the zero. Okay. I'm going to start my indexing from the zero and, and what I'll do is, I'll give a gap on that. Okay. I'll give a gap on here. And this gap is nothing but my stopping number. Okay. This is a, a similar like you have start you have stop and you have steppings okay so this is my stop uh, start number that is i will starting from any particular number i'll be stopping it if i don't mention this everything will be printed out from the starting number what i'll give okay and stepping is like in the intervals you are going to print out your statements so i'm saying zero to nothing and in the intervals of two so everything will be printed in the intervals of two let me give you one very clear example for this Let's say okay. Let's say this X is having this much elements. So if I am saying to print everything, so what happens? You can see this double colon. So my, and uh, I have not given even the starting number and even the stopping number, right? So I'm getting everything out there from zero to ten. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not giving even a number for the stepping, not a starting, and so what I'm getting is everything printed out. Now, let's say I'm writing it as from 2 and leaving it like this. So, what happens from the second element, you can see everything has been printed. Similarly, if I write this as just like this. So what will happen? I haven't gave any of the starting number, any of the stopping number. So by default, it will start from the starting number and will go in the intervals of two. So what you can see is it's going with zero, then with two, four, six, eight, and ten. Okay, in the intervals of two, I'm getting this right. Similarly, if I write it as I want from number one and then the intervals of two, so it will be printed with the one now the intervals of two. Okay. And meanwhile, you can write from 1 to 6, 1 to 5 in the intervals of 2. So you will be only getting the numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, from 1 to 5 in the intervals of 2. So you can see what are the 
values would be 1 and 3, right? So these are kind of an indexing we do. Similarly, we can do with the negative indexing too, right? So if we write it as minus 1, so this will always give you a reverse. We are getting a reverse of this particular thing, right? Okay, so these are the kind of things we explore in indexing and slicings. Right? Now coming up to the operators. Coming up to the operators in Python. Okay, so operators in Python are mostly of some six types, right? So we have assignment operators, we have arithmetic operators, some Boolean operators, some relational operators, some membership operators, and your comparison operators. So there are a lot of things, right? So let's start with this uh, arithmetic operators. So arithmetic operators are mostly used for doing some arithmetic calculations as you can see from the name, right? So let's say you are having some two uh, points, two and four, right? So these x and y are some two and four right here. Now I just want to see the addition of them. So I'll be just doing x plus y, I'll be getting the numbers. Similarly, x minus y will give you a number, right? x multiplied by y will give something, right? Then this division will give you some numbers. So what is happening in the division, right, guys? You can see that till now we have done all the things and we have found the values to be a integer itself, right? But in this case, in the division case, we are getting a float value that is two by four, right? It uh, it will obviously give some one by two to point five value. But what to uh, convert this into an integer? So what you can do is you can just write integer of x y y, and you'll be getting the integer value. So to avoid this writing of integer, what you do is you just pass on this and you will be getting an integer value of that. Suppose you are dividing 10 by 3. What you get? 3.333 and something like that, right? So if you write integer of 10 by 3, what you will get? Only the 3. So to avoid this integer, what I will do is I will only write 10 divided by divided by 3. And like integer division. So this particular sign is known for as flow division or integer division right so this will give you integer division and this will give you a normal division or the basic definition of division what we do right so uh, for again right let's say this is one more operator 2 to the power of 3 so for the power functions we use uh, this exponential one right that's a double uh, asterisk sign right and you will be getting 2 to the power of 3 as to be 8 right you can write x to the power of y that will be 2 to the power of 4 16 right Similarly, uh, there is something called as a modulus, which will give you a remainder, right? So if you do like 100 divided by 2, so what will the remainder? 0, right? Because 100 is completely divided by 2. But that st statement, if you write divided by 3, you will be getting 1. Why? Because 3 uh, to the th multiplied by 33, and then you will be going to uh, get 99, 100 minus 99 as the 1, right? So remainder would be 1. So this modulus will give you the remainder of that and as compared to everything. So these are the arithmetic operators that is your plus, minus, divide, uh, integer division, exponentiation, okay, modulus and multiplication, okay. These are coming in the arithmetic operators. So similarly there is one called as comparison. Comparison operators, as you can see, the name suggests you that this will be comparing some values to be there, right? You will be given some of the values and you will be asked to compare those. Okay, so you will be properly doing some cap comparison things here. So you will be having some X and Y, let's say, and you will be comparing those values. Let's start. So let's say this X and Y do an A and B. Okay, let's assign this. So we are having X and Y. I am not assigning again. So let's say I am saying X is equals equals to Y. So I am checking whether the X is equals to Y or not. Like, like if I say this 2 is equals equals to 4 minus 2. So 
So this is uh, once again. So this is a true statement, right? 2 is equals equals to 4 minus 2, right? That is a true statement because both the sides I am getting the result as true, right? So similarly, if I write it as 2 is equals equals to 5, that would be a false statement. That would be a false statement, right? So that's such x is 2 and y is 4, so we are getting a wrong statement out there. But if I write x is equals equals to y minus 2, I'll be getting a true result, right? That is a comparison of an equal so that this compares values on the basis of their equalness right equity you can say so this compare the value if, if, if and it gives true if both the values are equal <coughs> sorry next we have not equals to so this was equals to <coughs> similarly we have not equals to but for not equals to what you do just put an exclamation mark and just write it like this So this will give you a true result because this x and y are not equal, right? These are not equal and I am writing a correct statement that x is not equals to y. So that will give you a true. Okay. So if you write 4 is not equals to 2, so that is a correct statement. Do you write 4 is not equals to 4? So that is a wrong statement that will give you a false. Okay. Similarly, we have uh, more uh, operators there like for the, let's say 5 is greater than 6. So greater than operator but then 6 is less than 5 6 is less than 5 so that is false statement so greater than and less than similarly you have 3 is less than equals to 5 okay that is wrong and 3 is less than equals to 3 now this will become true why I'll make you explain see what happens when you give two of the conditions and this state what happens that this number will be first checked with the first condition and then with the second with the second condition right so this will go with the three is greater than three and if the result comes as true you will be getting as a true result okay even if you don't compare the equals one even if only one single value or one single comparison becomes true you will be getting the answer as true so if i'm saying that three is greater than equals equals to three so if 3 is equals to 3 or 3 is greater than 3, any of the condition is coming true, you will be getting the values are true. Okay. So that does not mean to satisfy both the conditions here. One condition is true, you will be getting the output as a true one, right? So 3 is greater than 3, you will be getting false result, obviously. But 3 is equals to 3 is true, right? So that the whole statement becomes as a true statement. Similarly, you can write 3 is less than equals to 3. And you can get this someone has written something. Same work for strings. ASCII, strings are compared on the basis of their ASCII codes. So if I say, if you want to str greater than equals to str, right? Because these work on the basis of their ASCII codes. You find the ASCII code of this str, uh, sorry. So individual S, T and R are fine to be their ASCII codes like S plus R T. Okay. So that would give some values. S, T, R, ASCII codes give some value and it is compared to the another value and then you can just make on that. Right? You can also check this ID to be so could be having an ID and you can compare it by ID wise. So, ID of this. So, both the time it is like both the time the assignments will be with the same uh, item will be same, right? So, that is right. And there is again one less than greater than equals to this. So, similarly, how many you have greater than equals to less than equals to and greater than, less than, and not equals to, and the equals to, okay, like this, it's all it is. Next, next we come up with the uh, assignment of it is. So 
assignment operator as the name again suggests you that this will be used for assigning some values right so before this we read about how to compare the values now we'll see how to assign the values so after assigning you can check on the comparing things right so assigning uh, so till now we have been using one assignment operator that is an equals to so how we do is we just write on that x is equals to 5 that is nothing but i am assigning some values to x right we are writing x is equals to 50 so i am assigning y as a value of 50 okay this is called as assignment operator the first assignment operator equals to similarly you can pass on various assignment operators like say this i am writing x equals to x plus 5 so what will be my x obviously it will be 10 because it is 5 now and i'm adding 5 to it and it's becoming 10 right but in case if i don't want to write the statement of x equals to x plus this what i'll do is i'll make a short term of this i'll write x plus equals to and then the value that's it okay this plus will be shifted here and this x will be removed and the y five value will be shifted here right so you just be writing x plus equals to 5 and then you check your x so now your x is 10 right 5 will be added to it and it will be becoming 15 over there right you can meanwhile add as this 25 you can check your x values to be 40 like this you can work on like this right similarly there is a uh, subtraction one also so that is multiplication division power okay so there are assignment operators you can work with this like right there is one called as your membership operators So membership operators are such like see what happens here you check on for the uh, you check for the whether the following thing lies in some area or not there right so you check for those things let me tell you that if I write it as if I write x let's say this Okay, so I've written X and there is there are something there, right? And I'm saying now that A B C in X. So that is true statement, right? Because A B C lies in this X, right? If I write as any particular thing. So that is a false, that doesn't lies there, right? You can, so there are basically two kinds, right? So you can write ABC not in X. So that will give you a false statement because there that is in X, right? So ABC is in X. ABC in X will be a what happened? Oh, there is a gap. So ABC in X will be uh, a true result, okay? You should maintain the gaps and all those things right so this is your membership operators which is a in and not in right similarly uh, there is identity operators okay that is is or not is okay that is working on is and not is like let's say So let's say you you are having x as a b c. This is c d. Having y as a b c. Let's say x dot copy. 
so what are my x and y these are a b c c d e and a b c c d e the same right so if i say x is y so this is false if i say y is x so it is still false right so what i can do still i have done a copy of this this is not equal because if i look on to the id of x and i if i look on to the id of y you can find the difference that id are difference but if i say this z and if i say this is equals to x and if i find the id of x and z so this will be now giving me a correct good result right how if i say z is x so that will prove x is z that is also true understood so this is like you can also check it or x is equals to y that will be so x is equals equals to z that will be also true okay now the difference only is between the y and the z is that this is giving you a equal values but not the equal locations okay now these is uh, this z is giving you the equal location as well as the equal values all right this is how it works out so you have discussed the membership and identity operators also so uh, there is some more call as your logical ones So logical operators are where we combine some conditional statements. So these are used only when we combine the uh, conditional statements. We'll be learning on what are conditional statements. So this we use only when we are using to uh, apply some conditions on that particular code, right? So these are of three kind, like uh, you can say and or am not. Okay. So where does this and will work? This and what is the working of this and, right? So this and will return you true if in this side and in this side, that is your left hand side and right hand side. If you write the statements in this and, hey, you can write it as two less than three and six less than five. So see carefully what you have uh, what you have written till now. So you have written two is uh, greater than three and the six is less than five. So these are two of the conditions. Now and will return you a true or false, right? You will be getting only true and false results. With this so if you write an and and you have two of the conditions so it will only return true to you only if both sides conditions should be true okay any side condition is false you will be getting the output as a false one right the two is greater than three false six is less than five is also false so let's say i'm writing three is greater than two now and i'm saying this uh, six is to be greater than five so this will be true because both the signs the conditions are true so that is what i'm saying is a true result and a true result will give a true result but a true result and a false result will give a false result okay so similarly like a false and a false will also give you a false result so this is how uh, and works on right so similarly there is another one that is or so or like it or is like that one that greater than equals to or less than equals to right there what happens any one conditions come true you will be getting a true result right so there what happens if i write 2 is less than 3 and i write 6 is less than 5 so what will happen uh sorry this is to be or so you'll be getting a true result over there right so that is the statement that is you write true or false you will be getting a results there let's say if i write true or true so these are your conditions statements if you write true if you have false or false or let's say false or true or if you have false or false this particularly thing we read in the discrete mathematics right so what you see that if, if your conditions are true or false you will be getting true true or true you will be getting true true false and true you will be getting a true 
and the false and false you will be getting false results okay so these are the uh, operators right you can say uh, similarly there's a true for true and this also, right so uh, the, the next is the, uh, or the last one is right from called as not right what this not does this not will just give a negation of whatever your outcome is but this will give a reciprocal of whatever your outcome is right so you have true if your outcome is true it will be giving you false so if it is false it will be giving you a true result right so let's say i'm writing a statement that is x is greater than 5 or let's say 10 is greater than 3 so obviously 10 is greater than 3 but i am applying not before this so this will be a false statement even if it is correct, it will become false. So this is how it works on. So if you write not of true, we will be getting uh, minus two. That, this is something called as bitwise operators. So I'll be discussing this one. Okay. So let's say you write not of not of true. So that is not of true false, and then not of false will be true. Okay, this is how it works. So these are called as some not. So identity discussed, membership discussed and this are the, uh, the basic operators we are having right let's just move to the next type uh, that is our list and the tuples uh, the list today we'll be doing the list so we'll try to understand the list So see guys, lists are just a collection of heterogeneous data in which are arranged in some ordered ways and you can just uh, make duplications in your data, right? You can make uh, the same data, you can write the same data for more than one number of time, you can, uh, you can just index the values, you can change the values. So these are mutable, okay? Lists are mutable and uh, meanwhile you can just convert this list to any other type like kind of set or tuple or anything right so and list is having some size of things and like uh, you can do a lot of things with the list we'll see one by one okay so for a generic definition you can uh, you can say that list are a collection of uh, heterogeneous data right the heterogeneous data types you can say on right because there are a lot of data types you have said it aloud like four or five right and this will be containing and for the further more data types you can say that this will be containing your data types right heterogeneous data types like you can write more than one number of data type in one particular list right and then you can work with it so let's say i'm making a list of fruits let's say apple Post is good. All right. So this is and this is how we write a list. We start a list with a square bracket. So this is fruits, right? If you just check on the type of this fruits, and if you find the length of the fruits. We come to see that this is the list and containing some four elements now i can see the size of this particular fruit right i can see the fly size now let's say if i'm taking numbers i'm taking a number list and i'm saying that this is one two three four five six let's say five uh, till ten so this number is a list of some one to ten numbers right so what are the size here what are the size this list is taking up so for that you will have to import your sys and then you can just check on sys dot get size of this phi multiplied by the length of this num so this will give you the size in bytes of this particular num is having a size like right? So this size is 5, so individual 5 is having if this one, if the size of individual uh, number is this, whatever the size of individual number you can see as, as, let's say, the size of individual is 28 bytes, right? So if it is having some 10 numbers, 
So what will the size of the whole list? That is 280 bytes, right? So we'll see further. We'll also learn NumPy and we'll see there how we compare, how we just can see. Now we'll also see the execution of time also. So let's say this is the start time. Okay. And let's write a statement. I'll tell you what I've done. So you can just calculate your time used will be the start time minus the current time and you can multiply it by 1000 to get the values so if I see on the time it used for performing this calculation will be along something minus 2.0 by this one minus 2.0 oh sorry minus 3 start time So you can see this to be that is having some 3.453 milliseconds to just do this particular task. And what it did is uh, basically it just took over some 10,000 numbers and this added this to be in the num. So if you just check on your num. So now from the list of 10 numbers, it would be like having a great numbers there. So you can see this number has been changed from one and it has gone till now you can see so it did this work within 3.45 milliseconds microseconds you can say okay so this is the value you are seeing some 9999 numbers it added up within some of this many seconds you can even more enlarge this and you can check on let's add one particular zero let's run this you can see the time used there so this is having some 29.48 time milliseconds right and you can see the number now so this is pretty uh, pretty like more big now so more than this so one zero is having one very big number right so one zero will increase a lot of things there you can see you can increase let's see what times it takes We're taking a lot of time now let's say okay let's, let's see the time used so this is uh, quite good. So it's taking some two, three seconds here. So if we don't multiply it by a thousand, what you'll get is the time used as just as 2.252 seconds. Okay, this is exactly the second value which is having. So it took two seconds over there to execute this one. And you can see on the number there. So we'll have to wait some two, three seconds to work on this. So run this. it's not printing like the uh, around this is the number around some tens thousand lakhs and this some some around one crore and it is saying that it reached the windows limit so you can use some operations to write this window limit or you can just pass on this to just see the hundred first numbers and then you can see how it's the first hundred numbers are there right this is how you can use these things to find out the occurrence and like all those right so what i uh, show you is nothing but i have just done a small operation to see, make you see that what is the size of things this list takes right so now if i run this statement so i'll see the size to be this 59136082058 right that is quite huge but the time is good right 2.52 seconds that good right? so see guys these uh, these are the 
uh, things we can just write on in the list right so what I, uh, now you will be uh, wondering if i write if i'm writing the number of till 100 why i'm getting till 89 see what happens you can see this 1 2 10 and then it's starting from 0 why because see this is because I have used the append method, right? I have used the append method. Now the list of, list was having some values previously also, and I appended the values at, in it. So this is coming as right. So this is your first 89 values, and you add up these values, it will be becoming total 100 values. Okay. That is how it work on. Now let's see the list and the, it's all of the type C. So we know right that the list is a kind of a collection of heterogeneous data where we store some multiple values of different data types okay so uh, we have to do something about fruits okay now let's say that this is fruits okay that is a uh, fruits apple banana cherry and orange uh, let's say i went to shop i went to uh, a shopping right and i was to be bought of this apple banana cherry and oranges meanwhile i found something good fruits over there and what I did is I just added them on my list of the elements and I said that I'll be buying this too right so let's say I got to see uh, any particular fruit name let's say mangoes right so I found mangoes and I uh, thought that okay I should buy this right so what you will do is you will be writing or you will be appending that price to in your uh, list right you will be adding that price to right so let's say that the pricings the pricing of this apple was let's say 120 okay let's say the pricing was 120 rupees for banana let's say it's like it's about 60 or let's say 70 for cherry it was let's say uh, 250 for oranges it might be around 60 okay so this is your pricing list okay of some fruits now you are saying that you want some uh, you want some of the uh, mangoes too okay so you will have to add on the things in your list to calculate the total pricing right that you are having or not so what you will do is you will uh, for adding on the values in the list there are two kind of methods that is one is appended uh, what is append and one is an extend right so append you will use what I have used here in the above uh, code that is append so if I want to add on one particular value, I'll be using a pen. Let's say I'm adding mangoes and these are 200 rupees, right? So if I see my pricing, I would find this that the 200 rupees has been added up in my list now, okay? Now let's say, okay, now let's say that I, I saw this, okay, uh, this is in my budget, I can buy this mangoes. Now let's say I went to shop more and I go to the vegetable sites now, right? And I found some of the vegetables there to buy on, right? Now let's say my vegetables, my veggies, uh, to be. Let's say I was to be bought some of the vegetables. Let's say it's to be ladyfinger. Right, some of the basic ones. Okay, so. I'm having this veggies list and similarly this pricing of this now I'll have to I will have to add the pricing of this veggies too right so now I will be adding multiple pricing at once not one by one right so there I was just only buying this uh, uh, mango so I just added up one particular value now I went to a vendor and he says this is the cost of this this is the cost of this and this so I'll be adding now a lot of values at once so you'll be using extend there right so this extend will be used to add a lot of values at once right more than one value you'll be using uh, extend there so pricing dot extend the lady finger price let's say it's to be 80 not 80 it is i think 40 a cabbage to be 45 or 50 cauliflower to be 20 flower to be 80 i think okay so see what will happen if you see your pricing you will find this now to be everything to be added up there right everything to be added up similarly you can just work on this list this and right okay so let's say i did all these things okay i did all the uh, additions and all the things i have done with my 
fruits and my vegetables right so meanwhile what happens this this particular 200 or you can say this particular mangoes costing is getting very high so what i will do is uh, i'll say the vendor i'll say the vendor to right or let's say i went to another place or i went to shop on some eggs and like for the things right so i i went to shop on for the eggs and i i just told the vendor to give some of number of eggs right and that eggs let's say the pricing of the eggs was around 300 right so so what i'll do is i'll check on my budget and i'll see that no 300 will not be okay for me okay first i'll do i'll say that okay you give me 300 right so uh, what happens will be again appending the values and it will be like 300 and that is okay now your your pricing would be 300 okay so you are having like all the things combined in your list and you can just add up the values of the total uh, total shopping you are doing on right so you are getting all these things right meanwhile if you saw that you are having some 100 rupees less all right you are having 100 rupees less so what it will do is you will have to drop something so these are the things you have bought till now okay so you can't drop any of the things right here so this is you are buying now so what you'll do you'll make some uh, remove to these things okay so what i'll do is you will be re removing this 300 and you will be coming up with the uh, you will say to come up with only 200 pricing of x right so what it'll do you will be re removing this 300 right so for removing you have a lot of process you have pop you have uh, discard you have remove okay you have these three of the options to remove these things in the list so if i want to remove something i'll be just using remove and i'll saying remove this 300 okay so what will happen i will see my pricing and this will remove this okay so similarly i will say that i want to remove this vegetables uh, all of the things right because vegetables has been just uh, bought so i was saying that let's say i'm using this card so this discard will remove let's say i'm using this lady finger oh sorry Pop. Actually, this discard does not work here. I pop of this. Let's say give it any value. Don't give it anything. So pop. What does pop? Basically removes this thing from the last element, right? Automatically, it removes anything from the last element. Discard is sorry. Discard works on the set, right? I just misconstructed there. Okay. So this is you have remove option. You can remove anything from there, and you can just work with this pop and this will remove the particular element you want right so this 300 instead of 300 what i was saying that i'll be adding 200 to this right so this pricing would become 200 there so if i see my pricing this is my total budget that is the pricing of this right so how much money i spend it in on the day so money spent would be the sum of this pricing right money spent would be the sum of this pricing and i'll be printing this money spent and that is 1170 rupees all right so if i just see and i'll check on my bill and i'll see that what was uh, you can say which product or which uh, item was the most costliest one so you can find out that the most cost item would be the max of this pricing and similarly the least cost item would be the main of this price uh, 
and you can just pass on these things to print on. So I can see the most costless item was 250 and the least cost item was 40 rupees. Okay, so the least cost item, least cost of the any item price is 40 and the most costless item was of rupees 250. So if I want to find that which item was of rupees 250. So I don't know right because I haven't given anything up there so we'll discuss this in dictionaries and all those uh, we can find out the values there better right so uh, the 250 was 250 was 250 was which was 250 if we see we have defined type so 250 120 70 and this cherry we have defined 250 okay so fruits we are having okay so 250 is nothing but the uh, you can say on the you can this is the pricing of the cherry so how you will find that so you will check on the for the index location of this 250 what is the index location of this 250 so you will say that in the pricing what is this index location of 250 so this says it is in the second position okay now you will see your you will see your list of the products you have bought so you can say the products you have bought is nothing but the combination of this of this what you can say fruits plus the veggies right so if you see your products that is apple banana cherry oranges lady finger cabbage and also you bought the cauliflower and the eggs so what are your products so this is basically if I just print this so these are your products that is apple banana cherry oranges lady finger cabbage and all these things now what is my pricing is the same is the length of this products so this is how we tally right is the length of the element same so it is saying the pricing is having nine elements and the product is having eight so is this any element we have forgotten so we remove this 300 that is okay we remove the cauliflower all right so pricing is for 120 anything Mangoes are missing, right? Mangoes are missing there. This mangoes are missing. So mangoes are in the position of the pricing. The mangoes are in the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this fourth number. Now, see, I have missed one of the element and I want this mangoes to be inserted in the fourth position of the products. Okay, so what I'll do to insert any number, what you can see this uh, this append and extend what it does, this append what does that it will be appending the values one by one in the end of the things, right? You have seen till now, if we append any of the values that is to be appended in the last of the list, right? So similarly, if we use the extend that is also doing the uh, elements adding up in the last of the things, right? So if I want to insert anything with the particular location, if I define that this 300 now, this 200 or let's say, this 300 where we have appended the values 200 right so let's say uh, this 200 for mangoes i want to append it in the 0 1 2 3 4 fourth position okay so what i'll do is i'll say products dot insert and i want this to insert in the fourth position and what i want to insert is mangoes that's okay right so you can see your products We'll come to see that. Okay, one second. We'll come to see this product is having apple, banana, cherry, oranges, mangoes, lady finger, and all those things, right? Now you can check on this length of this and all. Now this will be nine and nine. Okay, so the nine products I bought and nine pricing I have. So this is the products and this is the pricing. So these are the products and these are their pricing. So these are the pricings of the individual products I have bought, right? that is cool now 
if I am checking that again, I'm checking the maximum number of the pricing or the maximum number of the cost, the max cost. If I just print again, this max, if I just copy this, if I just paste it here, you can see it. The max number, uh, the most costliest item was 250. So I will find it as in the pricing. What is that index number of this 250? Which is what is the location of where it will be having? Okay, so you will be finding the index value and it will be saying that and also you will be finding this list one also 40 so this is 2 comma 5 okay so this second element or the second product is the uh, costliest product or this second or this fifth uh, product is the least uh, or the very least costliest product okay. least cost product so what I'll do is, I'll print, <coughs> sorry, so I'll print that in the products, I'll find this index of 2 and in the products, I'll find this index of 40. So the most costliest item and the least costliest item would be this. Okay, so that would be now. So this will be that. Okay, the index position of the values and two is not in the list. Okay, sorry. You can just say it as product of two products of five. You can assign like this, right? And you can check now that I want to find the most costliest and the least costliest. So I can see the most costliest was this cherry, and the least cost the least cost item was this lady finger, right? Okay, this is how you can just deal with your things, right? So I, I have given you basically these five basic informations for this list that how if you want to add any particular element, so you'll be uh, using this append. If you want to add multiple element, you will be using uh, xn. If you want to remove something, you can use dot remove option. And if you use dot pop, it will automatically remove the last element, okay? So if you want to check anything, if that lies in this list, like, uh, let's say that you made a list of some items, right? So let's say that you are going to shop for this grocery and let's say that you have made uh, a list of items, let's say, so you made it like, Yeah, so don't go much in these things, right? Uh, I'm just taking it as normal ones, right? That's so basically uh, my interest. So this is not my interest, right? So I just focus on these things when I go for shopping. So let's say this is a grocery, what I'm taking. That's not a grocery, these are just but, uh, kind of used for the laser time, right? So this is uh, nothing but what I'm going to just shop, right? Let's say. So these are my list and what I'll do, uh, meanwhile, let's say that uh, I'm having a pet and I want to buy something from a pet, right? So what I'll see, I'll check on whether this particular thing, uh, whether the thing I have added in my list or not. So let's say uh, I'm having my pet and I'll see, I'll, I need to buy a belt for him. So I'll see that whether this belt in, is there in my groceries or not. So it's saying false, so I'm not having belt in my groceries. So, or let's say this is my items. We got. Grocery name is not getting much good. 
so that is false so what i'll do is i'll just use this items and i can just append this there right and i can append this well to this and now i can check on this items and this will be having this built with it okay so that is uh, how you deal with the things so this is how you can just write on and if you want to see your number so how, if you want to see that number of uh, uh, elements you are having in your list so you will just apply a loop over there that is let's say for x or for items uh, let's say for i in the products let's say we want some products right so let's do one thing uh, okay let's that. So for items in the products, print i. So this will print all the products to you, right? This will give you the. No. So th this will give all the products that is apple, banana, cherry, oranges, mangoes, red finger, cabbage, and all these things, right? Meanwhile, what you can do, you can just sort on these things to find uh, like a dictionary values and all those, right? So let's say this is there are some students in a college. So let's write some names. Uh, let's take some of the names. Okay. So these are some of the students in the college, right? So what I can see, these are not an ordered, right? If I just uh, go on for assigning them a roll numbers. So I'm saying the roll numbers are the length of, roll numbers are a list of elements of the length of uh, students. Okay, so students are not defined, students. Yes. End of this is not possible. Okay, so let's uh, assign them one by one. That is also okay. You say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many there? Are? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have assigned the roll numbers, right? So their roll numbers are to be given by their names, right? Which which name come first and right for that. So what I'll do, you will write student dot sort, and then you will check your student names. So this will give you a sorted way of some student, right? Which name should be coming first, and then what names to be like for that. And then you can assign some roll numbers to them. That is, the roll number will be like for the individual and like that. Okay, you can print it like that. So you can do like this. Let's say for you can say for x in for x comma y and student for this roll number in the student you can print on this x you can print on this y or you can print on this student and their Roll number. Too many values unpacked, right? Uh, let's see here, somebody. So that is not defined here as in sets, right? So you can do one thing. Okay, we'll discuss this in dictionary. That would be much better. But till now, you just uh, check uh, check it as like you can do sortings. You can do you can like sort anything. You can just add on anything. So you can also find the sum of the numbers of the products you are having. You can find their uh, index values. And meanwhile, you can also count for the things. Right? Let's say there are uh, there are student. Okay. So there is Ashish. Let's say I added one more student, and I said this. This is also okay. They they are like a class can have more than one particular name, right? So I'm saying this student. This is uh, also having so there are first as an ashish second as an ashish if i use this sort method again so what you can see is see this two ashish are there right so i can count as if there are number of students in there if i 
I'm saying that how many ashes are there? It will say two so two ashes are there in your list, right? So there are several methods of a thing you can do in the list. You can just count on for the things. You can add on things. You can uh, you can just index of the things, right? You can uh, iterate over the things. You can pop on the things. You can make a lot of right. So let's say if my whole work is clear, uh, you can copy the things, right? Like. Right? So if I am saying that my work is now clear, I don't want this list of this, uh, pro this products and pricings and all these things, right? I don't want this veggies, uh, sorry, where it has gone. I don't want this veg and this uh, fruits and, right? So I don't want these things. So what I can do is I can just clear. So for clearing a list, what is, uh, is used? So let's say this is fruits and you will be uh, just writing clear. So it will be getting clear, right? Similarly, I will be using veg. And I'll be clearing this. So this will clear out the things. Now if you see your fruits, so that is cleared, right? Similarly, if you see your weds, that is also cleared, right? So this is now uh, no use of mine, right? So I'll be deleting this. So I'll be just writing deleting fruits as well as uh, delete this weds. So this will just, if you now, if you check your fruits, it will be that this is not defined, right? If you check your veg, this is also not defined because these have been deleted, right? So this is how you can just delete any kind of list. So uh, these were all of the methods that is your append, clear, copy, count, extend, index, insert, pop, remove, reverse, sort, and everything we saw, right? So any problems in the understanding the list methods to you, Yes. Anyone any, uh, having any problem in understanding the list methods? I think that is most clear to you. Okay. So now I'm going to the uh, understanding of some different type called as tuples. Okay. So these tuples are a collection of again the heterogeneous data as kind of list but the only difference is that the lists are mutable but the tuples are not okay. These tuples are not mutable right you can't just change the values okay one thing I forgot in the list is that So I forgot one thing to do here, that is, see, that, let's say, this Ashish, the student of this Ashish, right, or let's say this Chris, so I have written the long spelling of Chris, that is C-H-R-I-S-S, that's good, okay. So what I can do is, I can just replace the values as I'm saying the student of this Chris, so first I will check on the values of this index of this crash. So this is 2, alright. So what I will say, is this 2? So I will say this student of this second to be given a value of Chris. And then 
print on this student list. So you can find that this crest will be replaced by double S and F that is. So you can easily index the values and then you can write on the things. Okay, you can easily index and then you can just write uh, or give the next values to it, right? That is easy one to go for that. Okay. Now in the tuples, what happens? As I say, tuples are a collection of heterogeneous data which you can which you cannot write, you cannot uh, change the values there, right? For changing, there are some terms and conditions to change on those things. But they are, but they are ordered and they are not changeable. They, these are unchangeable. We always say that these are unchangeable. And uh, we, we saw that in the list, we use some square brackets to write on the things. So what happens in this tuples, we use some forced brackets here, like this rounded brackets to write on these things. Okay. So let's write a tuple there. Let's just say that I'm having some names. Okay. So I'm having some of the names as Tony, Robert, Samuel, and Steve. Okay, and I'm having their gender. So particularly or on means. So these two are having their own having the same category right these four are of same kinds you can say okay so names and gender are there right now uh, let's say let's say you can check on the type first of all that is tuple like for the gender it will be also a tuple right now I want this names to be printed out first of all. So does the gender. And you can see this orderness of this thing. That is, as I have written, I am getting the orders there, right? So one tuple can have the duplicate values too. Okay, that can have a duplicate value. Now, if I want to access the elements, I want to see that what is the gender of this uh, third that is male all right similarly i can just find out the names of this third so now let's say i'm work i'm searching for a job for any student and uh, or like an internship for a company like this searching for that and i'm saying in the names what i'll do is i'll be checking out for uh, this two or three students so i'll be seeing the number of uh, the the students or let's say you are just in the classroom, right? You're in a kind of a classroom and you want to make a group of students, uh, a teacher want to make a group of students of some who are starting their name, whose name starts from the S, right? Uh, so what it'll do is, you can write, you can just say uh, name start you can just see what are the names of there. That is your minus one, and minus two. So exactly, it's uh, minus two to everything, and that is Steve and Samuel. You can just write them. So why I can't here instead if it would have been a list, what I could do is a name start uh, index or name start count, and I could count how many capital S values are there, right? So uh, it would have seen that this is zero. Right. this is kind of zero so that is a pro problem here so let's say let's say any name if i want to find it, let's just say steve so there is one steve okay similarly if i want to find as kind of samuel so exactly it takes one other minutes. so that is uh, once again zero Zero. 
so you need to only pass one particular thing and then you can check on your values so similarly let's say uh, i've just passed on this steve and i can find out uh, if i remove this one just there out right? so you can find out there one particular occurrence of that okay so you can find you can only use two parameters on this kind of tuples that is you can count on the things you can make a loop on the things and also you can just see the index values of these things right let's say so this will be 3 okay so that is the only operation you can perform on this particular names one kind of right nothing else you can do if you let's say this uh, robert or let's say this steve samuel in place of samuel let's say samuel has name his uh, changed his name and has made as sam all right there is a sam he is uh, trying to make his name as only sam u l s then outside right so what you can do you will say that the names dot first of all find the value of the samuel where he is so that is a second place so you can just uh, not write it as two and then again you can just write it as s a m u e l or s a m like this things so you cannot write these things to be happen there because the stubble object does not support item assignment so what you have to do is you will have to make is the kind of a tuple and then we can first you will have to make, change this in a list and then you can make it as in a tuple right so what you can do is you will say this names to be first converted in a kind of a list then you can index the values and then again you will say this names to be in the tuple of the names and you can print on your names and you can see the changes so for changing a value for right for with the indexing process you have to do this now let's say you have one particular item and you want to make it that tuple. So, what if I write it as x of 20? Is this a tuple or not? So, for checking, like you can just check on the type, that's it, type of x. And this is not a tuple, this is an integer. To make a tuple with a single element, you just put a comma here, that's all. And you can just check on the types now, that is tuple. So, you cannot append any values, you cannot remove anything, right? Uh, you're just saying that this name start clear so tuple will not leave anything clear so this name start pop so you can't even remove anything from there understood once you assign in tuple that could be kind of a permanent thing you can say then you can just based on various things are there to change on the still you can change the values there right it depends on kind of things you write okay so uh a tuple well, i was saying that let's say this is a tuple 10 all right 20 30 40 50 and I'm going to add this. So I cannot use up and I cannot to take extend and all those things. So what I can use is this one. But that should also be a tuple to be added up. So I can use it with the X and I can add up. So this X is a tuple, right? So you will be getting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 20. I cannot do this operations there, right? Like then. Okay. You can do put this as plus. That will be optic. So these are the things you deal with the tuples, right? So you're getting assignments on the uh, tuples and this list too, right? So that is all we can do with the tuples on the list. Now we'll try to see some basic uh, statements that are called as your conditional statements. All right conditional statements so how these things works so this is the last topic we'll deal with today but tomorrow we'll try to finish out this dictionary and all those things conditional statements all right
okay see uh, this conditional statements right uh, this actually we use when we try to give some of the conditions right when we try to find out uh, when we try to make make some of the statements which should have options to work on right so when you have more than one when you give user more than one uh, like uh, statement or more than one options to work so we use there this kind of conditional statements right so let's say a basic conditional statement i am saying only that uh, can it can be just a normal program right so it can be a program to test test a positive negative or neutral number okay so how can you get this uh, positive negative or neutral number how can you test that so you can do let's define x which will be an integer input from the number and let the user to give in float to okay so this is an x now there are three kind of statements conditional statements are three kind like for if for l if and for else now we use this if statement to check on for conditions and if the condition is not satisfies uh, not satisfies we will be using elif statement okay that is else if so uh, we will be using elif only uh, or the statement will go in the elif statement only when the if statement is false right so we will check for the if one first and then we will go to the elif one right and also if the elif condition uh, goes wrong we will go in the else statement right then uh, but the difference is that between the elif and the else that elif statement will also check for a condition but the else statement will only execute whatever you write it will not check any con uh, any uh, conditions or right kind let's say that if your x would be greater than 0, 0.0 okay if it is greater than 0, 0.0 i'll say that print this x is a positive number or not x we have read the format method right so let it be this x is a positive number and we'll do, write the format and if if the x is equals equals if the x is less than 0, 0.0 So if it is less than 0, 0.0, we'll print negative number, right? And if it is even not positive, even not negative, then obviously it is a neutral number. It is 0. okay so run this uh, right any of the values let's say 6 so 6.0 is a positive number right uh, let's say minus 8 so that is a negative number okay um, uh, let's say 0 so that is a 0 okay. so this is uh, just a normal program there you saw how to make some inputs of the statements and how you just understand the things it's right on here right that is a like kind of else statement you use now you can make a lot of things with the help of a use uh, with the help of this conditional statement you can just check on for various kind of things let's say let's just say that uh, um let's say i'm the admin of user i'm the admin of instagram and i have a list of username of the users
So let's say I'm having some users, let's say A, B, C, C, D, E, P, F, G, G, H, I, J, K, L. Okay. And I can use this like if, so let's say a user for login. So login, the user will give an input and I'll ask for enter a username or I'll say enter the username, that's all, right? So I ask that you just give me your username, okay? And that would be username, the whatever he will be giving on, right? So, uh, how will I approve this right kind of? I'll say if the login information lies in this username of if the user whatever is giving. So, I'll then pass on these things. Uh, I'll just say that password equals and just I'm giving as a just a glance of you to just work on. So, you will be saying enter the password. right and I'm not checking for the passwords now right that will be a quite big program so that is I haven't made anything for passwords too uh, let's say I'm making this so passwords I'm saying has to be one 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 two 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 three 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 and four 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 all right and there are one two three four five so let's say five 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 so if this the password of the user belongs to this pass I'll say print uh, login successful right and I'll say Okay, that is the login successful welcome this all right so like this so if this is okay if the password is not okay I'll just say him that print password incorrect and if the login even if the login so this was all if the login is found in this username so what if the username or if the login is not found in this username so in that case I'll just say so there you can do you can ask the user to create an account right and you can also give the user so that is uh, you can give him that LF LF you can say Okay, first do with these things. So else you can just uh, write on this as username not found. Okay, you can just pass on these things. Uh, that is good enough to work on. So let's say you are writing a username. So let's say I'm writing my name over there. That is username uh, not found. Sorry, this is not not. Okay. So if I write this A B C, so it's asking for the password. If I write five five five, so this is incorrect password. So let's say this is uh, A B C. The password is one one one. So it says uh, okay. Still. Mm. All right. So passwords are in the integer. You need to convert this in the string values because I'm giving a string value and you can take inputs in the string if you don't want this password to be integer you can just pass on this integer value to run on so let's say abc and this 111 and login successful welcome abc you can see right okay so this was a condition like uh, if a username is having some login uh, credentials and he can log in or like that okay uh, basic uh, methods for right 
So what if I want to create a username for it, like that user? So what I'll do if, if, I, if a user wants to create anything there. So what I can do is, I can just say uh, print welcome to uh, anything like for let's say Instagram. Okay, welcome to Instagram. And there may be options like, so if you want to create an account, what you will say? So we'll say that print to create account press one or to login press two. All right, so there only two options are there. So if the user or let's say first take the input. So let's take input of the user. So that would be kind of input and you can say that enter your choice. So let it be a one or two, right? Let it be one or two. So uh, user can give one or either user can give two. Okay. So if the input of the user is equals to one, so creating account, so what I'll say, print or don't take print, just write uh, give the user. And ask him to write a username. Enter username. Okay, I'm just taking username and password and nothing else, right? So enter username. Now if he gives a user, if his username uh, already present in this username, so what I'll say, I'll say username already exists. All right, username already exists and I can again ask this statement to him. I'll again uh, write this one to him, right? Now, if the username is not present there, I'll say him password. I'll say for entering the passwords. Okay, uh, he'll be entering the passwords and that is all he did, right? So username given, um, he writes the user as right. Uh, so you'll be checking for this process whether this particular thing is correct or not, right? So you can apply some loops or like functions over there. So I'm not going for much of them, right? So you'll be getting a username, you'll be getting a password, right? And you can. Just give it as password or what else? Okay, fine. And you can just do it. So I'm not going with a lot of security things and all. Okay, that's an overview. So this has been created successfully, right? Okay, and now let's say that if so if his input is not one, then obviously his input would be two. And one thing more, once you create a username, what you do after the account has been created, what you do is you just append the values to the username. You append the values of this user to the username and this password. There is, I think, PAS. Yes, PAS. And you use this PAS to append this, this passwords. Okay. And this is was uh, this was the first thing. If the user want to create a account, right? So if the user want to login in his account then you will be choosing this two and then the things would be same as like this one 
write this. The things would be very similar as this. So login and if like the uh, login is there, so your password you will be asking on. Now if the password is this, you will be giving this or else we will give like this right. Similarly for the login and username. This would be print username not found, right? Or let's say if the user does not give any of the input. So if he is entering apart from one and two, I'll just say uh, invalid input. Now that's all, right? So this is your short program of how you can just run on the things. So you will get a welcome to Instagram for creating account. Press one for login. Press two. So let's say I'm pressing two over there and this is saying to be enter username. So let's say I'm writing my name. So that is, let's say username not found. So I'll make a username for this, right? So let's say now I'm choosing one over there and uh, it's saying, okay, enter username. So let's say I'm saying ABC. So this says username already exists. So again, it is asking enter username. So let's write this, right? And let's say so right now enter the password so let's say to be cool so it's saying account created successfully okay now again if i run this let's say um i want to just go to the login credentials to check whether this work correctly or not i'll write this things there and the password there so it says login successful welcome my name right so that is how you can just create, you can add on and that is uh, how it works on things, right? So if you see your username and the passwords, so you can see that these are the usernames, right? These are the username, uh, one new user has came now and this one new password has came of that particular user and this is how you can make it on things to work, right? So let's say if I give an invalid password, that will not work obviously, right? So these are the things to work with the uh, kind of list and because tomorrow we'll be starting and this is just, uh, the conditional statement how these works on right so let me stop your videos